Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Paya. Hello. Okay, thanks for watching. And in case you don't know, my name is Dr. Paya. And, <laughs> and this is the first of a series of videos on linear algebra tutorials. Because I know Black Pen, Red Pen made a lot of videos on calculus and differential equations, and my goal is to be the linear algebra version of but Black Pen, Red Pen. Seriously, like I haven't done linear algebra for so long, so totally this should be you know you. Aww. Yeah. Especially you told me last time during the interview that you told me linear algebra is very very class to teach. It is. It is. Yeah. Yes, totally. Yes, yes, yes. So of course that's welcome, Dr. Payan. Yes. So how are we doing today? Okay, today we're gonna learn a very classical method that's very important, Gaussian elimination. Nice. And it has the name Gauss in it, so in fact it is very important, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise it would just be called elimination or something. <laughs> okay, and this is a technique you'll see over and over and over again. And I'm not even kidding, if there's a linear algebra question you cannot solve, use this technique and I almost guarantee that you get at least lots of partial credit. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, at least that's how I was when I was an undergrad. I don't know, but I know how to row reduce. So today we will solve this the following system. And one thing to notice, the names of the variables, they don't matter. You could have used x, y, z. You could have used x1, y1, x1, x2, x3. You could have even used, I don't know, heart, smiley, and banana. Okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. In fact, let's do a little bit of math and magic and get rid of the variables altogether. So, let's save. Let's put, in other words, all the coefficients in one table called the matrix. Okay. And which coefficients? Well, this is 1 times x, so we put 1, and then 3, and then 5, and then 6, and then again 1, minus 2, 4, minus 8. And notice what you put here, well notice this is really 0x, so you put 0, 1, 3, 0. And again, this is a matrix, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Just, in for now a table of numbers, but then we'll bring it back to life. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we want to do? We want to simplify this matrix. Ideally, we would like to write it in this form. Sort of a cliff-like structure, where this might be zero or non-zero, but what's important is everything below is zero. And it's a big definition, I'll explain it in a second. So, in particular, to do turn this into zero, we need to transform this one into zero. And the question is, how can we do this? It's by using what's called elementary row operations, or eros for short, because we love linear algebra, so it's a god of love. <laughs> okay, what can we do? What are the allowable moves? We can change two rows. We can make the second row the first row, the first row the second row, and we will use this. We can multiply a row by a number. We can multiply this by two, and then still get uh, a similar row. Or more importantly, we can take, for example, the first row and add or subtract a multiple of the first row to any other row, also with any rows. For example, in order to turn this one into zero, it's useful to subtract this row from this row. So, in other words, let's multiply the first row by minus one and add it to the second row. Then, what do we get? Well, the first row is unchanged, one, three, five, six, and then the second row becomes one minus one, which is zero, which is what we wanted, minus 2 minus 3, which is minus 5, 4 minus 5, which is minus 1, and minus 8 minus 6, which is minus 14. And then the last row is unchanged. One, 0, 1, 3, 0. And notice this is good. We wanted this 1 to be a 0, and that's what we achieved. Now, 
for reasons that become apparent in a second, it's good to have ones on top. And so now let's just interchange those two rows, which illustrates the process of interchanging. So one, three, five, six, zero, one, three, zero, and then zero, minus five, minus one, minus 40. Okay, good. And then what's the next step? Well, we want this to be zero. So let's try to make this minus five into a zero. How do you do this? Well, one thing we can do, we can add five times this row to this row because five minus five is indeed zero. And then what do we get? One, three, five, six. And then zero, one, three, zero. And then um, five times one minus five is zero. So indeed zero. Five times three minus one is 14. And then minus 14. And notice we have achieved our goal. Everything below that is zero. And this is indeed, this cliff-like structure is what's called the row echelon form or R-E-F in short. Not to be confused with R-E-M, which is a good band as well. So <laughs> R-E-F, and how do you define the R-E-F? Basically, it's based on those numbers. So those numbers on the edge of the cliff, they're called pivots. And not pivots as in I'm pivoting, but pivots as in pivotal. So it's important. So the pivots are 1, 1, and 14. And you'll see why it's important. And um, basically the requirement is everything on bottom of the pivot is zero, everything to the left of the pivots are zero. And this is exactly what we want. But we can do a bit better than that. So we can get what's called the reduced row echelon form. And the first requirement is that the pivots are one. So in order to make that pivot one here, we can divide this row by 14. So one, three, five, six, zero, one, three, zero, 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 one, minus one. And then the next requirement is simply everything above and below the pivot has to be zero. So let's try our best to turn this into zero, this into zero, and this into zero. Well, one thing we can do, we can subtract three times this row from this row, so times minus three, and we can subtract five times this row from this row. And then what do we get? Let's see. So we have Let's see, so one, so one, three, zero, and then six minus one times minus five, which is 11, and then zero, one, zero, and then minus three times minus one, which is three, and then zero, zero, one, minus one. So that's good. The only thing we still need to eliminate is this three, and for this, Let's add minus three times the second row to the third row, and we get one, zero, zero, two, zero, one, zero, three, zero, zero, one, minus one. And lastly, the last step is what's called back substitution. So we took this system, wrote this in terms of a matrix. Now let's write it back in terms of the system. But all this tells us is that x equals two, y equals 3, and z equals minus 1. Whoa! So we directly get the solution here. And lastly, this is what's called the reduced row echelon form, which is the requirement is simply the pivots are 1, and everything above and below the pivots are 0. And that's it. That's how you solve systems of equations. All right, if you like that and you want to see more math, Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Woo! Woo.
Go R E F. R R E F. R R E F. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Losing all my pivots.